the only constant in this world is change. Um, and the thing that changes is the acceleration of change. Uh, things just change faster. So, so both life and business is about expecting that change and preparing you and those that depend upon you for that reality. We have the pleasure of welcoming Kevin Jackson to our interview series. I'm Rishti Shah from the Ingati team, and let's begin with just a quick intro of Ingati. So, Ingati is the world's leading multilingual local chatbot platform which is available across 14 channels. So, 25,000 bots created across 186 countries in every domain and use case. We run the Ingati blog and video channel, which receives upwards of 300,000 visitors annually. And now for our guest, Mr. Kevin Jackson, is a globally recognized cybersecurity and cloud computing expert. Cited as a top 5 influencer and top 20 tech bloggers, he provides digital transformation, education, social media services to global firms, educational institutes, and national governments. He retired from the U.S. Navy in 1994 as an aerospace engineering duty officer and has supported digital transformation projects for NATO and U.S. intelligence community. So welcome, Kevin. We are very thrilled to have you. No, thank you very much for the invitation. Yes. So starting with the first question that we have for you, that how mm -hmm. can technology aid business and which industry really needs to catch up when it comes to technology adoption? Yeah, well, to be honest, <laughs> Technology accelerates businesses by presenting, processing, and delivering information. Every, every industry has specific information sources and information sinks. Successful business models deliver value by connecting those sources with the sinks and charging either party or, or both for the value that they deliver. Many industries that traditionally uh, use information in a, uh, I guess, physical form, or a lot of that, have difficulty transitioning to uh, digital because of the investment required. Um, there, there's also a, a culture of, of, of using uh, physical forms of communications. So, uh, and our, our laws and, and policies have been built around that physical communication. So your highly regulated industries really have a, a slow to adopt and transition, uh, mostly because the regulations and laws don't change fast enough to keep up. That's why you see things like healthcare that are kind of slow and, and education. But, you know, they know that's where they need to go and, and um, policies are changing. That is true. So healthcare and education are the slow ones and education. Well, manufacturing also, but they're, they're trying to catch up because of the economic benefits. Right. And finance companies, banks, yeah, so there is a, uh, really financial services are um, uh, accelerating their use of technology. I would say they're probably around the leading edge uh, because they uh, focus on the bottom line and making money and they're, they're very, <laughs> they will change their processes very quickly if they can uh, see a value in it. That is true. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, how do you think, like, uh, with technology uh, coming out of conversational intelligence, so how is conversational intelligence being adopted by business across industry? You know, conversational intelligence really does the same thing with respect to taking information and connecting the sources and sinks. Um, the information source on a website, for instance, is, is the visitor. When a visitor comes to the website, uh, you can uh, query and get information about the visitor. 
uh, the sync for that transaction is could be the website owner or another entity where the website owners collect information and data and may uh, sell or provide additional information um, to the marketplace. This creates uh, new and varied uh, business model opportunities, but it, it's, um, it's really unique because it's built around the real-time response and delivery of information. So the, the, the real-time aspect of conversational intelligence is, is really important. Um, and you need to have automation that can identify different uh, sources of, of data uh, to deliver um, and be able to mix, match, um, and meet the needs of, of the visitor on the website. How fast are businesses in adopting conversational intelligence right now? Yeah, I think... Um, they're kind of slow, um, and I think it has to do with both sides. I mean, um, me, myself, I, I don't really like talking to computers, <laughs> and uh, people really want to want to speak and interact with people. So it's, um, but it's really changing because this advanced technology, this type of technology is uh, permeating our society. Uh, you can't go a day without, you know, con conversing with a computer on the telephone um, or interacting with um, some type of script when you're going across the internet. So it, it's changing our culture um, and society is starting to accept that as, as part of, I guess, the um, convenience that, that they want. Right. But it does help in customer, improving customer experience. I think uh, it's getting better. I mean, uh, uh, AI, uh, machine learning, um, the technology is getting much better. We're, um, we're getting more and more use cases where you can actually get uh, value from these automated uh, scripts. So uh, I would say yes, it's, it's getting a lot better. So cloud computing uh, still needs to be seen as a business strategy. So how are businesses that have incorporated it seeing changes and how soon do these changes start showing up? Well, to, to be honest, um, cloud computing isn't a strategy itself. Cloud computing is a tool for implementing a business strategy. Um, and this is where many organizations fail. Uh, they uh, see cloud computing as, as just um, uh, another way of getting compute or storage. They don't understand that the business model should dictate business information flows. And the business strategy itself should specify the desired uh, and attainable goals for that business. Cloud computing is really used to implement those business information flows. And many organizations today just don't understand their data. They don't understand how the data is being used. Mm -hmm. And they don't see data as the asset that it is. So they don't manage data as an asset. Um, so they fail to use cloud computing and the and associated information flows in a way that maximizes an organize organization's chance of really attaining their stated goals. I mean, the, your, your business strategy needs to drive your choices when it comes to cloud computing. Right. And different, yeah, and different cloud service providers have different advantages and disadvantages depending upon what your real business strategy and business goals are. And those those goals really are associated with your um, your organization skill sets, um, your uh, uh, 
your security um, tolerance um, and and many other aspects, your culture. Right. But I think uh, organizations that are building right now, they are already uh, you know, using the cloud option and they are just starting. One thing also is that cloud isn't uh, an end all, right? Uh, yes, some things should go to the cloud, but similarly, there are some things that should stay in a data center that you build and manage, and even some managed service provider solutions are good. So most organizations will have a hybrid IT environment where they will still have data centers, they will have managed service providers, and they will have cloud service providers. And they need to be able to understand these information flows and data flows and be able to um, dynamically change and modify those flows based upon the customer's needs and requirements. Okay. But uh, would it be better to have a private cloud instead of having a physical location where um, a data center should be? I wouldn't say that one is better or worse than the other. It should be driven by the risk tolerance of the organization and the associated data and how that data links to the business model. So uh, it, it also is is closely linked to the investment requirements and the economic model uh, of your business. So it's not that one is better than the other. Um, every organization needs to uh, analyze uh, how they're going to use these choices and which is best for their own organization. Cloud, uh, there isn't one cloud, and every cloud service provider is not the same. That's true. Yeah. So, um... What would you advise organizations that have the facility to you know, migrate to the cloud, but uh, they are still not adopting this technology? Well, the, the, the thing about cloud computing, the first step in, in leveraging cloud is really reviewing and upgrading the organization's business model. Cloud computing uh, can be used to more economically implement old processes or create brand new ones. If you, if you just, uh, you know, many organizations just say, okay, I'm just going to migrate to the cloud. Um, but if you just migrate uh, your existing model in, into the cloud, that's like, um, I'm sure you've, you've heard the term paving the cow path, right? So when, uh, in the olden days, when people would take their uh, goods to market, um, they would have winding roads, um, you know, because they couldn't move the tree, they would have to go around the tree, or because there was a river or lake, they'd have to go around it, and they would get these paths to market. So in modern days, you may be able to build a bridge across the river or uh, across the lake. You may be able to get rid of that tree that was in your path. Um, and that's what cloud computing is like. It's leveraging advanced technologies to build a bridge or remove the tree. So if you just, if you just pave the cow path, you're doing the same thing uh, uh, and you're not improving. So uh, it doesn't, if you, if you just migrate without renewing or re upgrading your business model, it doesn't deliver innovation, nor does it address new opportunities that can be afforded by technology. Uh, you'd simply be doing the same thing we were doing before, but faster. So you may not be um, using the optimal path to market, so to speak. Uh, and that in and of itself could, could just drive you in, into an unknown or unforeseen failure mode of your entire business. Um, and if you, so if you, if you don't look at the opportunities afforded to the cloud, uh, you're just um, putting yourself in a position, uh, a disadvantageous position vis-a-vis -vis your competitors.
So what, uh, what, uh, you know, how should businesses leverage cloud computing technology? Right? Um, apart from you know, just having it as a data center, how else can businesses use cloud computing? Well, um, businesses can use cloud computing to improve their agility, to really identify um, and reach new customers, uh, to create new products and services. Um, and you may actually be able to deliver services leveraging cloud that were economically impossible uh, before cloud because of the um, capital investment required. So there, there, there are a lot of ways that cloud can help and improve the uh, top line and bottom line. So you're doing a disservice to yourself by not looking looking at cloud. And it's more, it's not just a data center. Um, it's, uh, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's agility, it's um, creativity, uh, it's flexibility. And all of these things are important to just about any business model. That is true. So what is the current situation of uh, cyber security when it comes to you know, using cloud technology? So cyber security as an industry is evolving uh, very rapidly, yeah. right? Um, and in many ways, it can be seen as an arms race between global society and the cyber uh, criminal elements. Yeah. Uh, but this will always be the case, right? Yeah. Um, and the, the pandemic itself uh, is really putting a focus on it because the COVID crisis demanded huge and unexpected investment into the remote worker infrastructure. Um, organizations before uh, were really um, not jumping on to like giving all of their employees laptops, whereas they were in their mind looking at the cost benefits, saying, uh, "Why would we buy a laptop for someone when uh, for three different people when if they just come in the office, they can all use a single laptop, so to speak?" Okay, but when we these entire countries started locking down uh, and they couldn't do any work, they were really forced to uh, buy laptops and buy uh, connectivity. Uh, so this, this earlier reluctance of enterprises to invest uh, in laptops also drove them, uh, they, they didn't invest into things like uh, data loss protection technology, DLP, or, or data classification, um, or enhanced data privacy and protection policies, um, because they, they tried to limit the exposure of, of their data. Uh, but their failure to limp implement the cybersecurity or, or proper cyber hygiene uh, put these organizations today into panic, right? They are afraid that they're going to lose their data and executives are just praying that they won't suffer any significant data breaches because they had to just throw these laptops out and, um, you know, and this, this, no. So unfortunately the hackers themselves have also ramped up because they sense this global vulnerabilities. Um, and, and that's just an opportunity for them. Yeah. So decision makers hopefully will, will learn uh, from this and, and recognize the reality of the data security crisis that they actually have been in for years, yeah. right? Yeah. And then like ostriches putting their head in, 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 the, in the sand, not doing anything about it. And somebody just <laughs> kicked them in the butt and their head had to come out of the sand. And now they're looking around and saying, oh, no, we have to do this. Right. <laughs> That's true. Well, actually, there is a lot of panic and people have, uh, you know, business processes are really up to a halt because people cannot think of what they can do to you know, 
have their uh, data protected or even continue with their business process. Right, right, exactly. They're just stuck here. Yeah. <laughs> so, having founded SoShare, can you share some light on what you call the sphere of influence? Well, to be honest, um, uh, social is like, I found it like four separate companies and three of which are, are still operating and including uh, social. Uh, but social was created um, uh, basically as a, a social media influencing platform across uh, multiple channels. Um, and what's really important to understand is that um, everyone is an influencer. Everyone has an audience that they can address and, and influence. The trick, however, is to identify the audience, build an expertise and your own self-confidence in the topic that you wish to influence, and then leverage the available tools to communicate through the appropriate channels. And that's really what we've done with social. Um, I was uh, able to build an expertise around cloud computing and cybersecurity and, and digital transformation. Um, and now uh, we've taken also, so, and many organizations and, and business owners are really interested in leveraging those technologies. So, uh, and, and people are now looking to social media as a means as a source <laughs> for for information and data, so um, so it goes back to where we actually started with respect to business models. I've, I've identified, I've actually created an information source in me uh, because of my expertise and experience, and I'm leveraging social media in social as a channel to connect with these sinks. And these are global uh, business models and uh, business leaders and business owners and industries. Um, so really the only difference is that, you know, you, you are the source. If you want to be an influencer, you are the source. And you can leverage these um, actually cloud-driven channels like social media, you know, YouTube, um, and others to connect with your audience. That is true. That is true. Yeah. Actually, <laughs> that's what you're doing, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> They're trying to, you know, leverage these things because today people are using social media, and if businesses are not, uh, you know, moving towards social media and trying to use it to connect with people, then I don't think customer centricity can be achieved without that. No, that's absolutely true. When I first, when I, I started one of my other companies, uh, GC Globalnet, um, it was because uh, I was being asked, you know, you know a lot about cloud. Uh, why, why don't, can you help us? Can, can, you, uh, uh, can you contract with us? And at the time I was working with another company and I couldn't. They said, well, you should start your own company. And I said, well, okay, let's try this out. But the very first first challenge I had was to let people know that I actually had started my own company. Um, and I really didn't have uh, the capital to uh, hire a marketing firm to get the word out, so to speak. So I said, okay, let's use social media. Uh, it's quote free and let, see if it'll work. So, <laughs> so that's how I started uh, really becoming a quote influencer uh, trial and error. Luckily, it was early in the marketplace and things have changed a lot, but I was able to grow uh, with with the industry and, and, and grow a pretty significant following, a pretty significant audience. So now, uh, like through social, we get um, 30 million plus impressions a, a month um, through um, multiple multiple channels, and we were able to monetize that into a, a real business model. And some of our some of our clients include like AT and T and Ericsson and um, 
uh, IBM, Microsoft, other very large companies. And as you said, many of these companies really weren't going into social media, so they didn't know how to use it. So, you know, once again, that was a sink. Uh, we had the source of how to use social media. We were able to close many contracts, hence a new business model. That's right. That is really <laughs> Actually, uh, innovative to think that way. That's true. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, apart from whatever you have provided us, any other sound bites you would like to leave us with? Sure. One thing, you know, if the current global crisis hasn't taught you anything, one thing you need to understand is that. The only constant in this world is change. Um, and the thing that changes is the acceleration of change. Uh, things just change faster. So, so both life and business is about expecting that change and preparing you and those that depend upon you for that reality. So you must be open to change, expect change, and be prepared for change. That is true. That is true. So thank you so much, Kevin, for uh, this thing. And yes, change is the only constant that we have. And yeah. we just <laughs> have to be adaptive in our lives. Yes, that is You true. have to be adaptive. Yes, absolutely. You have to adapt. Yeah. So thank you so much, Kevin, for your time. Uh, I think uh, our listeners will be really uh, you know, appreciating the knowledge that you have shared with us. So, no, well, thank you for reaching out. And um, I look forward to seeing this when, when it's published. Yes, definitely we'll share it with you. Thank you so much, Kevin. All right. Thank you. You have a good, uh, I guess, have a good evening. Yeah. Have a good day. <laughs> All right. <laughs>